boy. Always. <laughs> signs in the heavens and on the earth. I've been speaking for two years almost this ministry has been open. I've been telling, saying for almost 22 years of ministry there comes a point in time in God's patience level where it's up. You can turn from God for so long and if you don't turn back to Him there will be no way back. Now He's the way back because there's a way back for His children but not for nations. In this past week alone, we've had two bridges go down. The symbolism of that is when you burn your bridges on the way up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so guess what? There's no way back. I've told all of you to pray for this country. You pray that God bring every leader from the White House down to their knees. As you've noticed, He's given our government no rest and He will not. They think this country belongs to them and they can do what they want. They can't. This country belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. But those bridges going down were so symbolic in the past week. It shows how weak we are. It shows how we are crumbling. It shows how much further we're going this way instead of this way. Pray for your nation. This is a country in trouble. I've told you, that will come down, that will not. And it is so important for all of us to realize something. God won't change anything in a nation or in a person's life unless you do it from your knees. There is no other place to serve God from. Not standing up and raising and praising Him. Yeah, that's fine. But you serve God from your knees. You don't serve Him running around thinking you're somebody. Because if you think you're somebody, then He's not your everything and He's not your king. Because you think you can be your own Lord and Master. And you never could and never will be able to. So take serious your walk with Almighty God. But take more serious your prayer life. We talked about entering His rest. It's not an option. You're resting when you're on your knees. Because when you're on your knees, He will fill you back up. He will strengthen you. He will build you up from the inside out. Paul and I were talking about how we meditate on the Psalms. The law of the Lord is perfect. Even Carlin was saying it. It restores and converts your soul. The only way for you to be restored is not, yeah, you can go, on, go to the gym, you can work out, you can eat good foods. I do all that too. I'm getting better at it. But guess what? The only thing that needs to be restored is your soul from the inside out by the living Word of God. It can't be done with anything else. I can drink all the fruit and vegetables and smoothies I want to drink. I can get on the treadmill every day. I can lift weights every day. But that will not restore me to a spiritual oneness with Almighty God. Paul says physical exercise is good. But it's in the spirit that we get built up by God. And not by the ways of man. So it is time for everybody to take your walk more serious. We had some stuff happen here Wednesday. Tony and his whole family blessed this ministry. We had a foot washing here and stuff that was so holy. It's something that's so important to God. Because if Jesus did it, how much more us? But everybody that was here Wednesday also felt the power of God arise in here, blow those blinds off, and blow the insulation down off the window. When I say God arises in the house, He's in the house. And I'm not kidding. That was just the beginning of what's coming here. 
But you won't be a part of that unless you're one with Him. Because unless you're one with Him, you won't expect God to arise. You won't expect to be healed. You won't expect to be set free. You won't expect to go out and witness. You won't expect God to live through you to touch the sick, the blind, the lame, and everything else. You won't expect God to preach prophetic words through you. You will not because you don't believe that He's in the house and He's in Amen. all of you. What happened here Wednesday, it seems to be breaking loose more and more. So get ready for what's coming. If you want more God, you can have Him. But the only way you can have more God is if there's less of you. He doesn't share Himself. He will not share Himself with you. He comes to live within you. There's no sharing involved. And you're going to find out today that you don't have a testimony. That He's your testimony. Amen. You need to stop talking like you got something. The testimony has you, amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> Good. I don't know where this sermon's going today. <laughs> I've been studying all week. I was up this morning at 5.30 making more notes, more changes till almost 7 o'clock from 5.30 to 7. I don't know where he's going with it, but I know he's going. I've never counted on myself, and I never will. And the less I count on myself, it's almost like he gets me prepared, but he leaves me in the dark at the same time. <laughs> so I never get up here and put my hope in me to tell you something. This is about Him speaking to you, not about me. So today's sermon, I have no idea. I know what's on the paper. I know what I've studied all week. But I don't know what He's going to do with it. Usually I know ahead of time. I'll see, I got little glimpses of it this week and then it went away. And then this morning He had me rewrite all this stuff and make more notes and change things around. And I have no idea why yet. So you'll be as surprised as I will. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's all about Jesus. Remember something, your life has to be about Jesus Christ. If you're making your existence about something else, you're in trouble. Those bridges coming down are so significant to this country. They, they represent something so big. Let me tell you something. More bridges, the, the natural disasters, what happened in Oklahoma, we're praying for those people. These bridges coming down. There's an entire community in Northern California. The houses are sinking into the ground. They don't even know where the water's coming from, but it's coming up and sucking houses down. This stuff is happening. You know why it's happening? The earth is groaning for His return. The earth is groaning for us to repent as a nation. But the world thinks it can do it apart from God. And everybody on this planet is going to find out that He is Lord of all. This is His planet. This is His solar system. And we've breathed Him long enough. Amen? Amen? And Father, we come before You this morning. In no other name but the name of Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You, the Maker of heaven and earth, we bless You. We praise You. We glory in You alone, O oh God. And we invite You into this house today, Father, to just fill us anew. Cleanse out our hearts and minds from all we went through this week so that our only focus is on you and who you are because our life is not about us. It's about you and what you did on that cross and that that tomb couldn't contain you. This universe can't contain you. But come, Lord God, and fill us anew this day with your life, with your peace, with your joy, with your strength. Keep us one with you, O oh God, like never before. We lift up the body of Christ from one end of the earth to the other. Lord, down. Lord, just tear down right now every church wall in the world. God, we've made it a body of religion instead of the Holy Spirit flowing through your children. Lord, expose the truth of the gospel that you died that we be a family of one. Many parts, one Lord, one God, one faith. Lord, unite us again. Revive us again to be like you, O oh God. Change us, O oh God. Change our thinking. Keep our hearts and minds pure before the throne of grace. Because only you can keep us. We can't keep ourselves. We weren't made to do that. But Father, we just invite you into this house today. Bless everybody in here with your grace, your peace, your mercy. Refresh them. Pour the Holy Spirit on every vessel in here. Touch the temples of God. Touch us and revive us and renew us. Heal us, heart, soul, mind, and body today. 
Bless the music. Bless the word. Just bless this time, Lord Jesus, with your life in this house. Arise in here, O oh God, and consume us like never before in Jesus' holy name. Some of you got walls up and they need to come down. You got walls around you and you're not letting God take them down. I don't know what you You can build as concrete a wall as you want. We can call the concrete company out here and they can build you a 40 foot thick wall. But ask how the people in Jericho saw their big wall come down. You guys just saw a wall around some of you. How dare you not let God's love come and heal you? How dare you? He loves you unconditionally. There were walls I saw in front of people in here. Don't know who you are. I didn't see the faces. You know who you are. You already know you're fighting them. You need to fight and fight against yourself, this flesh, and say, I'm not going to put up with you anymore. I surrender my all to Hallelujah. Jesus. That's the only battle you have because Satan's already lost. You're going to find that out today. He can be enraged and angry as he wants to be, but the blood of Jesus is against him. You're fighting the wrong battles. The battle belongs to the Lord. And the reason you fight your flesh so bad is because you don't even give that to the Lord. You think you're going to overcome something. Clap your nonsense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make the announcements quick. This is going to be too good a day today. Hallelujah. You all know about Bible studies. What are we doing in the next pot lot? Sir Christopher. <laughs> well, we always talk about food. Yeah. We can do it on the 16th. That's Father's Day if everybody wants to. Do fathers want to get fed on the 16th? Is that good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Bible studies, Friday nights. I really stress, any of you that got to know me, I stress how important it is that we fellowship not just on Sundays. You really think you can do it by yourself? You go right ahead. You leave now. That's fine. But if you don't fellowship with your family somehow during the week, this is your family, your spirit-filled family, you're out there by yourself. We need each other to strengthen one another. Yes, my wife and I went away for a week, but you know what? I felt people praying for us. I felt strength from my family. Yes. I felt strength all week long. And when I realized that it was okay to be on vacation, I didn't have to do anything. It took a few days. But after that, the refreshing took place. The refreshing took place. There's been an anxiousness in the spirit realm. My wife's been feeling it for days. She didn't know what it was. You know what it is? It's hopelessness in self. You need to give up hope in yourself. You need to stop having hope in self. It's the enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ and why He died. Do you know that? When you put hope in yourself to be even accomplish and to do apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to fail miserably. You're going to be discouraged. Then depression's going to come on. You're going to have a pity party. Oh God, get over yourselves. Just admit you're weak. And you need Jesus. And His grace and peace will abound in your life. But until you admit, Lord, I can't do... I was in my shower crying yesterday going... You know, you're calling me to all this stuff, and I'm not really doing well some days, okay? I can't do this. I quit. I got to the I quit again yesterday. I said, unless you keep my heart and mind and me all to yourself, I can't do this what you've called me to. I can't. I got in the shower, went out and got on my knees. I cried some more, and an hour later, I was okay. <laughs> but you see what happens, though? When he breaks you down, don't be afraid of it. He's doing it so he can have more of you. So he can arise in here and bring peace to your heart and soul so that he can show you how much he loves you, how much he's in control. And it's the only way he'll fill you with his strength and bless you with his peace. Look at that baby. Even she knows. Hallelujah. See, children even know. They see things we don't. When you talk about Jesus, you see children all the time, they do this. They know. You should be as open as that child to the love of Jesus, and you're not. Hallelujah! Amen. So, potlucks then, okay. Ties and offerings there in the back. I got an email about that today, this week. I don't speak on it much because I don't worry about money. There were some people here Friday night. I went down to take the car to the shop in Henderson, Hyundai, people I don't trust. I was there for four and a half hours. Four people were crying. 
I got four or five hugs, even when I got in the new car and came home. Don't know how God did it, but He did it. Um, I went there to get one worked on and maybe get another car. I wanted something bigger. I got something pretty much the same size, but something brand new. Don't know how God did it, but when I left, I drove away in a new car. It turned into four and a half hours of ministry. Praying with some of the people that run that, that dealership in the middle of the showroom, home hands praying with people. Oh, really? wow. God. So, I went to a place where I didn't trust a soul in there. I've already gotten a phone call and an email thanking me for being there. Yeah. So, God showed up in that house. Yes, God showed up. I didn't, want to tr I didn't trust those people. <laughs> Luckily, God has me keep my Glock at home. Um, <laughs> when people do you wrong, your old thinking comes oh, yeah. back, okay? Uh, <laughs> So I went down there and I handed the one girl that's been after me for six months for them to try and make up for it. I handed her one of our flyers, a bookmark and stuff. This is how you can see us on. So she's sitting at the table. She said, Why'd you bring this? I said, Last night a Bible study, God told me to bring this to you. He loves you and he's trying to reach you. She just starts crying. I only talked to her for 10 minutes. She went back. She never came back out. She took that. She looked at that. She Because the cross. <laughs> Deborah Simpson made those bookmarks, and with that, the way that came out, she just held it. She started crying. Praise God. God touched her. Hallelujah. The kid's sitting there trying to sell me a car. I stand up, I put hands on his head, and I start praying in the tongues, and everybody's going, Oh, what's going on? Uh, so, guess, so guess what? If God sends you somewhere when you don't want to go, you really need to. Because I didn't trust a soul in there. Had no idea how I could drive out of there with another car. He not only got me another car, he got me a new one. So that's how great our God is. But like I said, even the one guy, he come out, they had to get him from the back because I was. I asked my keys three times. I'm going to go put the car in the shop, by. So they kept coming back. You know, they do the X's and O's. I threw the paperwork back at them. I said, go get my key. I'm leaving. Whoa! Now the guy with the tie comes out. Because he's been watching from the back, me praying with people. Yeah. Five people I want to hold hands with and praying that worked at Henderson Honda. Praise God. So, the, so that God touched that whole dealership. I did not. I just went. Didn't want to, but I went. So the next time He tells you go see somebody, and your body and your flesh goes, oh no, oh yes, go, because you never know what God. God was already there preparing their hearts to receive the love of Jesus, and the whole place got touched. It was beautiful. People crying. People hugging one another. Uh, the guy the next day afternoon called me back and says, you know that prayer about blessing this place? And blah, blah, blah. He says, we've already sold 11 new cars today. Thank you for your prayers. So, God is good. God is good. See, He's so good to us. Did you get your cut? <laughs> you know what I got? I got Jesus. That's, and that's all, I'll be honest with you, that's all I'm ever going to need. I've taught it before. Because in Christ Jesus, I went there for one thing, and God had such a bigger plan than my little thoughts. I, I went there not trusting people, walked away praying for the whole place and their families and their blessing. I went there with the wrong attitude and came back with the right one. See, we can't ever go by what we see or what we've been through, but by who we belong to. Because He loves those people a lot more than I did. But now my respect for them and my prayers for them change. I mean, they all have family problems, financial problems, people getting ready to lose their homes. We prayed for everything in there. Praise God. So it was such a beautiful thing that God did. Dennis didn't. I just happened to be the vessel he sent. Yeah. Amen. So stop questioning God what He wants to do with you. Yes. And let your walls come down. Amen. Let your walls come I'm sorry, you don't know much. He calls us sheep for a reason. <laughs> that's because there's a person in here like myself that's not the smartest pumpkin in the patch, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. He knows, He sees, He goes ahead of us to prepare a way. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That's right. So when you worship today, ask God to help you let your wall down. You really need to. Because I literally saw walls in front of God He's trying to get through. He's knocking and you won't let Him in. You need to stop. Whoever that's for, there's more than one in here. You need to let your guard down. You don't let your guard down because you've been hurt will join the rest of us. Yeah. He's never come to hurt you, but to prosper you, never to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. 
That is the Word of God. It's a promise and you can stand on it. So let your guard down and let Him love. He will never, ever harm you. God doesn't know how. He knows how to love you and to restore you and to bless you and to fix you and to heal you from what's happened outside these doors. Amen. So let your guards down today when you sing unto the one who died for you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.